So the interesting thing is about signals. Signals are like a new reactive primitive that allow us to do many things that we already could do with RxJS. But the main reason lies actually in something else. So the main reason for signal is to improve change detection. And I want to show you that based on a example. So we have a grandchild component, um, we, which is consumed inside a child component and a child too, and they are both consumed inside a parent. Now, Angular behind the scenes has a component graph. And on the side, what we see is a visualization of the component graph. So in our case, we have the parent component, which has child one, which has the grandchild and child two. Now we have this lock something button. And if we click that, we can see that the colors change. And in this application, a color change means that change detection was running for that component. So that means here, what is going to happen? Like, again, SoundJS, whenever we click on the button, SoundJS kicks in. SoundJS goes ahead, notifies Angular, hey, something changed, go ahead and figure out what changed. Angular will go traverse the component tree and for each component check if the bindings or if something changed, right? And therefore it has to re-evaluate or rerun those bindings. So now that's cool. But as you can imagine, this is probably not the most performant way and the Angularist team is well aware of this. So here we have four components, but imagine a bigger application, you might have like hundreds, even thousands maybe of components if it's nested and then with third party libs and so on with component libraries. So this is not the most efficient way. So what can we do about it? So what we did so far is we added a new change detection strategy, which is called change detection on push. And let me quickly go ahead and add the change detection strategy on all of our components. So we add on push to the grandchild, then we add on push to the child two and as well to our parent. So something like this. Now let's see how that impacts our application. So again, if we click on lock something, I think you can see it here behind me. So if you click here, notice how the application changed. So if you haven't seen it, like, it's still the same for parent, child one and grandchild. The color changes, but the color for child two always stays the same. Means we no longer run change detection for child two, which is pretty cool because we can basically skip an entire subtree. So that's what onpush does. Now let's refactor our application a bit. Let's say we remove the button from the grandchild and we move that button to the parent. And we call that um, increment, ops. We call it increment ops function. So now what we have, we have a counter service. And on that counter service, we have a counter, counter stream. Let's call it a counter stream, which is a new behavior subject of zero. So what we can say here is increment ops. And we can say this to counter service to next. So we increment that. And then in our grandchild, we can consume that. So we can directly go here and we can say, let's make that public or template public. We can say counter service. Yeah, yeah, counter service dot counter. What do you have there? What? I just want to auto complete that. Yes. So the thing here is that if we want to subscribe to the observable, of course, we have to use the async pipe, which we have to import, which is a bit annoying, but we have to do it. So now how does it impact the application? So we have an increment ops. And if we click that, we can see how the counter here increments here. And the interesting thing is that it doesn't change compared to the on push scenario because still the whole component subtree reruns change detection. 
right now what is going to happen if we say instead of an observable it's just like out of curiosity let's change that to a signal like so we have a signal which we have to import so we change it to a signal then we add a new function which we call increment signal and inside here we do the counter service and update live coding got so much better with copilot that's such a benefit increment signal and we call that increment signal then we go up we copy that line um, grandchild signal and now the cool thing is we can simply call it and we don't have to import anything right we can just do it like this now we have two buttons here and observable still for the whole tree now what about signals well do you see a difference because with signals we only run change detection for the parent that makes sense because on the parent that's where the event happens and there we kind of that gets marked for check but the interesting thing is that we only run it for the grandchild so that's very very cool because that means that we kind of have local change detection so we skip child one which doesn't seem like a big deal here but imagine we would have like 100 components here in between child one and the parent we could skip 100 unnecessary checks which makes it way faster and that's kind of what we call local change detection and that's one of the aims of signal to improve change detection to bring local change detection in the future or it's important to notice that currently this only works with zone chairs if you would run that outside of zone nothing happens because nobody runs the tick you still run the tick and the difference is that not the component tree gets marked for check but it gets marked for traversal i think and this one is dirty and then only that one is checked but in the future the angular team can improve this so that we might write like zoneless application because zone was a big pain point in many bigger applications it runs too many change detection it's often very magic and very hard to debug and has an initial load cost so yeah that's basically the idea or the main goal of signals